today in the news we've got some Intel, Microsoft and Valve. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Microsoft. Last week we got strong confirmation that they had been working on a digital only console. Well, a source at Windows Central got a leak of what the console box art will look like. And it's simple, it looks like an Xbox One S without the disk drive. Certain feature on the Xbox like the crossed out disk at the bottom are a nice little addition to make sure that no one gets confused with the regular Xbox One S. Windows Central wanted to protect the leak though, so what you're actually looking at is a recreation of the box art in Photoshop. It also looks like the all digital console will come bundled with Forza Horizon 3, Sea of Thieves and Minecraft. Forza is already 46 gigabytes on its own and Sea of Thieves is around 25 gigabytes without counting the DLC. So isn't one terabyte of storage a little bit too small for an all digital console? I know you can fit a lot of indie titles in there, but I was struggling with my storage on my 500 gigabyte Xbox One and I didn't even buy digital copies of games. What about you guys? How big a storage do you have dedicated to your games on PC or how much of your current Xbox storage have you used up? Let me know down below. Moving on, Intel's new 11th gen integrated graphics have surfaced and they might just be pretty good. Tim Apisak, leaker extraordinaire, has found an entry for Ashes of the Singularity that gives us an idea of how the IGP will perform. On low 1080p settings, the Intel Gen 11 LP scores 1400 on the benchmark. Now, if you compare it to an AMD 2200G with Vega 8 graphics, that is pretty bad since the AMD chip scores around the range of 2000 and up. But Intel actually has a few variants of their Gen 11 graphics. A deep dive into Intel's command center shows that there are 13 different versions of the IGP. And just like the Gen 9 graphics, the Iris branded line are the most powerful once. All of the Gen 11 LP models seem to feature around 32 to 48 execution units, while the Iris Plus models mostly feature 64, which means that performance could potentially double depending on what chip was used for the Ashes of Singularity benchmark. Anyways, that doesn't matter that much for someone that wants to build a desktop PC since the higher end solutions for integrated graphics usually end up on mobile platforms only, so I wouldn't expect an i7 or an i9 desktop SKU with Iris Plus. Sticking with Intel in preparation for their integrated and discrete graphics, they have released their command center. This is the software that was teased last week that looked like a game optimization sort of GeForce experience thing. And here it is. Strangely, it doesn't seem to have any issues running on a system that doesn't actually have an Intel CPU. As you can see, I'm running a Ryzen 1700X and it works just fine, up to a point though. None of the actual optimization works, so I can move all the sliders but nothing changes. It does look like it has a wide range of optimizations though, not only for your games, but things like film mode detection and skin tone enhancements all work on a simple video playback basis. And you can easily figure out what everything does thanks to the learn feature on all the buttons. Over the years, I've tried some of Intel's utilities like the XTU, but this one, the command center, is probably the most user friendly. I'll leave the link down below if you want to try it out. Oh, and it's only available available on the Windows Store, so yeah. In gaming, it looks like Valve will finally update the Steam user interface. There were several leaks and rumors about it, but it's finally official. So how does it look now? Well, not that different. The redesign is mostly focused on a more streamlined library and an event page for the store. Your library will have a home section where all the games will be shown with their covers. The game section on the left will now neatly be organized by genre and your friends list will be accessible directly on the right hand side where you can see their activity. The event page on the other hand will show you what's going on or what is upcoming with the games currently installed on your PC, like double XP weekends, updates that are incoming or even in-game events that are happening right now. Personally, I was never a fan of the Steam UI, especially not their Steam VR one, so any improvements will be welcome. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Tell me what you thought about today's stories as usual. Don't forget to drop a like if you liked it. You can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, and come and say hi on Twitter at boot underscore sequence. Take care. And uh, here's the photo of me from 1996. Nice snap.